limit contact between persons who may be infected and those who are not infected in order to reduce the spread of the disease using social distancing and hygiene measures. Some of these measures were put into operation already through existing legislation, but some of them, those, those that were put into place immediately using existing legislation were like the ban on travel of foreign nationals from the high-risk countries, the cancellation of visas, issuance of travel alerts and travel as advisories, undergoing high intense screening, the disclosure, the closure of 35 land ports and two seaports to try and limit the movement of people into the country so that we can be able to screen people as they come in. So the fewer the ports, the better the screening would be. But notwithstanding this, some of the measures announced by the president could only be brought to bear through regulations made under the declaration of the state of emergency in terms of section 27 of the Disaster Management Act. And since Sunday, legal representatives of the respective organs of state that play a key role in responding to COVID-19 have been at work to draft the regulations needed to further put into operation measures announced by the president. These regulations are a rule of order which have the force of law. So these regulations need to be acted upon because they are law. And the departments will further give directions or directives on other matters. And as the situation evolves, more regulations and more uh, directives may have to be issued. So I will just now mention a few areas where these uh, regulations touch. One, we talk, it talks about the definitions, but the second part of the regulations are about releasing resources. They particularly men mention the def defense because it probably has most of the resources that might be needed. But other departments also may release uh, resources. And those resources may be in the province, at national, or even at local. Then number three, it deals with the province prevention and prohibition of gatherings. That has been discussed nationally very widely, that there are no gatherings that should be more than 100 people. And of course, in places where alcohol is served, it, it limits that to 50 people. And these regulations, as I say, are law and they have to be adhered to. Number four, it's about people who may refuse medical examination or treatment or isolation or quarantine. Because in a pandemic like this one and in a state of disaster that has been declared, you have to be examined if you are found to have been in contact or to have um, symptoms. And if you need to be quarantined or isolated, you have to comply. You, you, you don't have the luxury of refusing examination or treatment or isolation or quarantine. Number five, again, it 
talks about places of quarantine because it's important that in every area there are places of quarantine in situations where people cannot be quarantined in their own homes. Regulation 6 is about closure of schools and partial care facilities, which has already happened yesterday. 7, it's about, it deals with the suspension of visits for 30 days to correctional services. 8 deals with the limitation of sale and dispensing and transportation of alcohol. The reason I'm not going into details is because the minister's concerned. Most of them are here, so they will give the details of each of these uh, on each of these areas. Regulation 9 is about emergency procurement procedures. As you know, our procurement procedures do take a bit long. But in this instance, the Disaster Management Act allows for emergency procurement. But we don't want this emergency procurement to be abused. So the Treasury will give us directives on how this will be used. But it's to ensure that nobody uh, is short of what is needed. No department is short or local government or province is short of what they need to combat COVID-19 because of procurement issues. Regulation 10, of course, gives the authority to different minister, ministers uh, to issue further directives. Now, 11 is about offenses and penalties because if these are law, then obviously there are offenses related to them and penalties. And 12 uh, explains that they come into effect on the day they are published, which was yesterday. And I think it's important to get further clarification for, for, from the ministers so that you can inform the country accurately. But also the issue of fake news or misrepresentation is under these regulations because it is under these regulations, an offense to deliberately misrepresent or even deliberately infect someone uh, when you know you are positive for the coronavirus. So this is just a summary of what is in the regulations, but the various ministers will then uh, give more details. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. We will now ask a colleague of Totama questions. No, you can add. Just ask. Just add a few items. Yes, then, then we can take questions. Now I'm in charge. Okay, this is where we say goodbye to our SABC3 viewers. Of course, we continue uh, to relay the broadcast from Pretoria right now. That's it. And those regulations, colleagues, are law, as Mam Kosazan has said. They are, you, you can't just avoid them. Avoid them at your own peril. Let's get Minister of Justice to speak to the part. And the Minister of Police will also speak to that part. Uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, Oh. <laughs> I forgot good morning. I think uh, for us, what is uh, clear is that uh, the limitations of rights in terms of Section 36 is now being enforced by these regulations that have been published by the Minister of Cocta. And in that regard, we will want to see maximum compliance across the country with the regulations. 
and uh, any failure of compliance will be visited upon by the necessary actions by the law enforcement agencies on any aspects of the regulations with regards to the various issues, fake news, deliberate uh, infections of other people, and other uh, offenses that could happen, even including people not complying to the issue of less than 100 uh, uh, gatherings. So for us, this is a very important means to help us uh, to, to combat this, to also enforce the issue of social distance. With regard to correctional services, as we speak, um, we are busy at the various correctional centers with the cleaning, with um, the hygiene processes that will be necessary for us to comply with the regulations because uh, the regulation says uh, the visit is suspended for 30 days. We do not want to take any chance. Hence, uh, we are currently busy with the processes of cleaning and ensuring that uh, the environment is hygienic. It will enable us to minimize and prevent the corona from entering our correctional uh, centers. And um, as and when the situation change, we will be able to further communicate. I think those are the only issues I will speak to, and as there will be questions. Thank you. Minister of Police. We are Bamba Nagar. No thanks, Mr. Uh, Minister. At the end of the day, everything that is, is said here will have to be enforced. Every other thing will have to be enforced by the by the police, as explained there. Uh, Minister Lamula and myself will have a further explanation, I'm told, tomorrow. But there are quick things uh, that we can speak to. Yesterday, I think there was some press briefing where they spoke about getting permission from the police station if the numbers can increase or not. There is no such thing. Nothing of the sort. You don't go to police station. You go straight to funeral and you go with 100 people. You don't go to police station. You go to wedding. You go with 100 people. This law will never be watered down anywhere else. Whatever you have heard is not there. It does not exist. What exists is, you know, is what is written here. Indeed, we... Honorable President has invited the clergy and the people from the faith-based organization. Most of them, they preside over these funerals, over these weddings. I'm sure they also put the word that uh, it's, look, it's not negotiations, it's a law. As we speak, the police are meeting. We meet first thing early morning again, dealing with the guidelines. We're putting the response teams where you're supposed to be 100 will count to 100. Anything more than 100 will be requested to go. But if you continue to break the law, this law is very clear that will deal with organizers. And organizers will be li liable for any of the broken law. Right? It was very interesting, uh, Minister, uh, Lamine Zuma, every time this uh, COVID-19 has been taking the lead, but this morning the lead was on alcohol matters. <laughs> this morning the lead was on liquor matters. Uh, the closing at, at uh, six, yes indeed. Nobody consumes alcohol at six, anywhere in the country except your house. Nobody. So there is one point that we need to clarify. They were asking about restaurants. Restaurants, you can continue to eat less than 50, but no alcohol, only food. Six is shut down, complete shut down when it comes to alcohol. You will be able only in your own house, nowhere else. So that, that must be clear. Anybody 
that sells alcohol and consumes alcohol at any other place except your own place, you are liable for any form of punishment. That is from Monday to Friday. Saturday, you consume no alcohol after one. And Sunday, unless you are in your father's place or your own place. So, we must be clear. We'll be giving more guidelines on these matters uh, to, as, we, as we explain. We just wanted to move on that one. The, somebody was saying it will be only taverns that will be closed. Remember, there are places at the taverns that they sell food. They will continue food minus alcohol. That includes restaurants and all other places, not the places that you usually find in the township. Nightclubs, night there is absolutely nothing. This thing of dancing with your mouth shut and uh, shouting this side, Corolla, Corolla, is not going to be there. As it has been said time and again, we are really looking this 50 uh, from the Justice Trust with the jaundice eye. Uh, we're looking 50. 50 might be still too big. Uh, yes, 50 might be too big. We're looking at it with the jaundice eye. Behaving, depending how you behave uh, going, going forward on these matters. Uh, we'll be coming with guidelines. What do we do with uh, people that 50 and all that? We'll be dealing with that. But uh, I'm, I'm glad to say next 24 hours, all police at the CSS, that is, that is what we used to call the church offices, now it's CSS, community service centers, will be having their gear, will be having their uh, mask and all that, because we want to keep them safe as much as we can. Uh, 1,153 police stations will start with them in the country and then work hard on the instruction of the, of, of the law that they must be clean police station, sanitize, gloves. It's difficult to get these things. They're absolutely not. The market is dry when it comes to this thing. Uh, but uh, we, we are working hard, to, especially those that are at the front line, uh, to, to, to make sure. Uh, we, we are not going to be hard uh, on, on the people uh, that are, uh, are, are on the funeral. That does not mean that we allow you to pass 100. Nobody will. Nobody in the eating place where the, the, the alcohol is selling will pass a 50. Nobody will be selling or buying an alcohol one minute past six. Nobody will be buying or selling alcohol in a public place at two minutes to nine in the morning, and there are no bash, there are no street bashes. Those people that will be, anyway, is illegal in South Africa to drink in public. So, street bashes are things of yesterday, and uh, we'll make sure that. Uh, we work with you, I hope we'll cooperate, everybody will cooperate. We'll be having meetings with the people that deal with these matters, and, but the meeting is just information. It's no negotiations of the change of the law. Don't go to police stations, I repeat. Go to funeral, less, uh, less, uh, 100 less, go to wedding. Police at the police station, you'll be just clocking them and giving them the extra job. They've got nothing to do with that. They ask us to implement the law. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Kale, Minister Patel. Tell us about the market. Thank you very much, uh, colleague. I'm going to be commenting uh, on Regulation 10 that has been uh, uh, gazetted. By way of context, the effect of the COVID-19 uh, on the economy is being closely watched. It will have an effect on our GDP, but our key concern now is to save lives and ensure that we minimize the economic cost. After we've defeated the virus, we will all need to work together to rebuild the economy. 
We've been in discussions with the private sector and organized labor to get broad support for government's actions and to mobilize their resources too to complement and strengthen our efforts. The discussions have been positive and across many sectors of the economy we receive pledges of support and partnership. Over the past few days, we've, through the National Department of Health, engaged the private healthcare industry to become part of government's coordinated effort to fight the virus. In order to facilitate discussions solely for the purpose of fighting the virus, and as part of the national uh, health efforts coordinated by Minister Mkise, we've been looking at the competition legislation and what exemptions may be required. Today, we have just published a regulation that deals with the health sector, and it will permit private health care providers to coordinate their actions as part of the National Department of Health's efforts. And this will include sharing of beds, sharing of facilities, medical supplies, nurses, doctors, and so on. This has been done under the new provision of Section 1010 of the Competition Act, approved by Parliament in 2018 and signed into law last year. It will include uh, hospitals and healthcare facilities, medical suppliers, medical specialists and radiologists, pathologists and laboratories, pharmacies and healthcare funders. Second, we are working with retailers and large food producers now to ensure that the supply chain from the farm through the factory to the shops remains strong and that basic goods are available to our people. Factories have reported that their production is stable and farmers have promised us a bumper maize crop this year. We have seen, however, a spike in stockpiling over the weekend and for much of this week in some retail outlets it tapered off, it decreased somewhat yesterday. At the same time, there is anecdotal evidence of price spikes in areas such as face masks and hand sanitizers. We are appreciative that the majority of South Africans have not rushed to the stores and have indeed remained calm. Working with retailers and the regulators in the past few days, all major retailers have now put limits on at least basic products in their stores. This has helped to calm panic buying. There's also been excellent cooperation from the retailers with government. They have committed to help us ensure that there are no unjustified price increases in this period. The retail groups include ShopRite Checkers, Pick and Pay, Woolworths, Spa, Game, Dion and Macro, as well as Clicks and Diskem. Today, we issue directives under the Disaster Management Act and regulations under both the Competition Act and the Consumer Protection Act. These deal with pricing and supply matters during the national disaster to ensure that we do not have unjustified price hikes or stockpiling of goods. We are doing this to protect consumers and ensure fairness and promote social solidarity in this period. The regulations and directions provide for the following. On prices, price increases may not exceed the increase in the cost of the raw materials or inputs and the profit level should not be hiked higher than in the period just before the outbreak of COVID-19. The regulations will cover the full supply chain and will limit price increases of suppliers in a similar fashion. On stockpiling, where people go into a shop and try to buy uh, uh, trolley loads of one product, all retailers will be required to take steps to limit the quantity of goods sold to any individual consumer. And a list of basic goods will be covered and gazetted. Retailers must take steps to maintain adequate stocks of basic goods during this period, including for weekends and month in shopping. There are also provisions to ensure that wholesalers 
take steps to ensure that there's no stockpiling at the cash and carry uh, retail out and, and wholesale outlets. The regulations and the directions are based on the first instance on a partnership model that requires retailers and wholesalers to take prudent and responsible steps. The regulations and directives will allow government to take firmer measures if they become necessary, including setting limits on individual products. We do not believe that this will be necessary immediately, as we expect that by working together with the business community and our people, we can contain prices and limit any stockpiling. I want to point out that the breaches of the regulations can have serious consequences. Some of the penalties in the relevant legislation include penalties of up to a million rand, penalties of up to, 20, uh, up to 10 percent of a company's turnover, or jail sentences of up to one year. We do not want to invoke any of these, as the best approach is one of partnership, and we welcome the solidarity and the positive response from our people in the last few days. But the regulators are ready to act. We have present here today uh, Commissioner Tembing Korsi Bonakele, the head of the Competition Commission, as well as Commissioner Tezi Mabuza, the head of the National Consumer Commission. The Consumer Commission will have a toll-free hotline that can be used by our people to report increases in prices that are unjustified, and the number will be made available to the media today. We'll also send, it's just been gazetted as we started the press conference, so copies of the regulations and the directives will be forwarded to the media this afternoon. The two regulators will also be available for any of the media queries immediately after the press uh, briefing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Members of the media, we now open for questions uh, from your side. Two, three, four, five, six, in that order. And it will be, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the Minister of Police, he says that he thought that there would be no questions. <laughs> yes, yes, Kwanit. I'm starting with you. Thank you very much, Kenny Tante from the Sunday Times. Just two questions of uh, clarity, um, um, ministers. Um, the issue of um, the, the the issue of going to police for 100. So the, what the what the premier said yesterday is that you will have to get permission to hold a funeral or wedding at 100. So you saying that's not the case, minister? And then um, just a, 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 a no, he said that law doesn't say that. He said that law says 100. No. The law says what, what the Premier said is that even if you're having 100 people at a funeral, or less than 100, you'd have to go to a police to get permission. And that's not the case. And then uh, uh, just one last question uh, to Minister Patel. Um, about the, 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 these laws that you've been citing, when does it get, get into effect and when will we see it uh, gazetted? Thank you. Um, Snatemba, Matelota, Karanda FM. Minister Kale, two questions. Um, is there a way to regulate that your nightclubs, your taravans, your shibins don't sort of go over 100? And whether or not that at 6 o'clock they will shut down, there will be no selling of um, your alcohols and the likes? And do you have an idea of the exact charge or the penalties um, for people who do sort of um, break the law, I guess? Next. Good afternoon, Ministers. Barry Bateman from ENCA. Two questions quickly. Um, Kuruleni Mayor Mzandila Masina made an announcement yesterday, something about the procurement of a vaccine from Cuba. How does this fit in with COCTA's position, and, and why isn't the national government taking the lead on the procurement of any type of vaccination, whatever he might actually be referring to, if you can just clarify that aspect. And then another one. Ordinarily, this time of the year, the briefing we'd be having is with the Transport Minister. We're going into the, the, the Easter holidays, and we know it's a very important time of year. 
the government has spoken to the, the ZCC for their pilgrimage, but there's an informal pilgrimage of Gauteng to KZN. People have spent money often quite in advance for these holidays, and I'm sure with the best appeals, there will still be people who want to travel. How do you anticipate dealing with that? If you consider, if you look at the mass exodus to the coast, you look at the petrol stations. I mean, there are hundreds of people moving in out there to get into restaurants and the like. How do you anticipate to cope with this kind of exodus of people to the coast? Thank you. Next. What, what, what did you do to our instrument? I don't say anything, Minister. You um, should have done something to I make see. it not to work. Um, Minister, thank you. It's Natasha Pei here from the SABC News. I just want to know, in terms of areas where, I mean, people don't have basic sanitation services and water services, will you be providing those services in light of, you know, um, COVID-19? And then, um, speaking to the EFF, I think on Monday, they had suggested that government needs to probably state quarantine people instead of them being in self-isolation. And are you considering such facilities? And then lastly, uh, today the Gauteng um, legislature, the NCOP endorsed the decision to dissolve the city of Tuani. I haven't heard anything from you. Can we, yeah, perhaps have a reaction to that? Thank you. Uh, next. Hi, Ministers Wonga, Tulane, EWN. First question for you, Police Minister. When we say enforcing of the law, when it comes here, I'm sure a plan will come later, but are we talking about a special police alcohol funerals situation where, because I'm trying to understand, because we're a country with limited resources, so in order to enforce these, you'll need manpower, you'll need money, you'll need vehicles. So I just want to understand the practicality of implementing these rules on that part. And number two, how... All right, those are the, some of the ministers there who are elaborating on the regulations that have been gazetted in relation to the Disaster Management Act, uh, which uh, effectively take effect uh, pretty much uh, yesterday, from my understanding, from what uh, Ngosazana Jamini Zuma said. Um, interestingly, the police minister, Becky Klele, says that at 6 p.m. there should be no bar, restaurant or tavern that's serving alcohol at that time. Food, yes, they can continue to serve, but no alcohol thereafter. The big question, of course, is how they're going to enforce this. We're going to say goodbye from the On Point team. SA Today will have your news. Well, actually, today is a special day. It's the MPC uh, decision. So my colleague Arabile Gumede will actually be giving you uh, that uh, special broadcast. Uh, that's all from us. Do take care. Set, Trans Travel, Scene 1, Take 1. At Trans Travel, we love traveling. What if I told you we'll be traveling back into time? Yes, back to the 19th.